Hello there guys, this is Christy Lewis from Dusty of Ski and Space. Today is going to be another weekly reading vlog, starting off, finishing off May and starting June. So I'm really excited for this and I actually have another theme this week. I really enjoyed reading like Kate Howe last week and I'll probably finish up some of the books that I was reading for her this week. However, I also have not finished several other books in the recent past that I was enjoying, but I want to actually finish them. So I decided to do another reading like someone vlog because three of the books were things that they read or recommended and this just seems like the right time. And that is for a vlog of reading like Jennifer Brooks. So I'm gonna be reading like Jennifer Brooks this week because I started Moby Dick I think in April and didn't pick it up at all in May. So I wanted to do that and I also started Paul, the biography by N.T. Wright, several months ago now, I think. I, I don't remember what month, March, April, somewhere in there. Um, also recommended by Jenny, which by the way, she loved Moby Dick. Yeah, on her last beach trip, not this last beach trip, but the beach trip before that, she just sat down and read all of Moby Dick. Paul was more recent, she read during Lent. And the other book is something that I think she read quite a while ago, and that is um, A Brightness Long Ago by Guy Gabriel Kay. So these are all things that I had started and not finished, even though I was loving them. So this is the right time. So it seems like I need an excuse to fit fantasy into my reading schedule lately. I'm not really sure why that is. I think I just tend to prioritize history lately or nonfiction and memoirs and stuff like that, or like studying languages. But I'm excited to be reading some fantasy because lately I've been listening to a lot of fantasy and it's just been the best thing or reading it like right before bed. So I'm now reading A Brightness Long Ago by Guy Gravel K right before bed. I'm only like 30 something of the way, of a percent of the way through it, but it's really beautiful writing. I'm really enjoying it. I really want to continue with that. So that's one thing. Um, as far as Moby Dick, this is going great as an immersion read, um, meaning I listen to it on audiobook while I am reading it physically, and it's definitely taking up my time slot of um, a little bit more of really focused reading. There's usually like an hour where I have really focused reading time between 8.30 and 9.30 in the evening and that I am reading Moby Dick during that. So I've tried listening to it on audiobook but I think even though when I'm immersion reading I'll sometimes miss things and zone out. Um, it's easy to kind of get myself back on track because it's pretty long-winded and really the enjoyment comes from just enjoying the writing. You know, it doesn't really matter if you miss a thing here or there, but I find that when I'm listening to it on audiobook, I'm just not enjoying it, period. I'm missing too much and I don't have the text to like look back to as I'm listening and, you know, read like the first sentence of every paragraph or whatever to kind of reacquaint myself with what's going on. So enjoying this as an immersion read and I'm finding it very relaxing because I can just listen to it and read along and that's going really well. So, and then as far as Paul by Andy Wright, I've been listening to that all morning and I just, so, oh, and I wanted to mention too, there's so many biblical names in Moby Dick. So there is something I feel like uh, biblical, there's just something so biblical feeling about this. Like there's been Ahab, Ishmael, Bildad, Peleg, and just the idea of getting you know, swallowed by a whale is so Jonah. I don't know if we're gonna be swallowed, but in a lot of the um, book covers, it shows a whale like attacking a ship. So it just feels very Jonah in that sense. So I'm wondering about all the biblical connections. I don't know if I'm reading it closely enough to really get them, especially since I put it down for a whole month, but we'll see. I'm just enjoying it for what I can enjoy it for at the moment. So, um, I also am loving, let's see, I'm sorry, I'm reading myself. Okay, so back to Paul. So I have some quotes from Paul. So um, this morning, so when I'm physically reading it, I'm now on chapter six. 
and so I have quotes from what I'm physically reading. When I'm listening, I am 50% through it. I'm on chapter nine, part two. So, but um, when I was physically reading this morning, um, so, and chapter nine, part two is about Cor Corinth. So the whole book is following Paul to the various locations that he went when he was spreading the gospel and kind of, N.T. Wright is talking a lot about what that would have seemed like to the people that he was talking to, what that would have meant. He talks about like why Paul was persecuted um, in a place that we in the modern world think of as very religiously tolerant because there were so many different gods. Um, but he talks about the reasons why Christianity was not tolerated basically because it was a challenge to the authority of the emperor in a lot of ways. So um, yeah, so interesting. So, um, and it also, it talks, one thing that he mentioned just recently was, um, that he thought it was very likely that Paul's poor physical condition, which is referred to in the scripture, is something to do with his eyes and probably the result of the violence to which he had been subjected for spreading the gospel because he was stoned, you know, like you can't really recover from that very easily without any injuries, especially not in the ancient world. It's just, I mean, but even in the modern world, if you're, if you sustain that amount of catastrophic damage to your body, uh, it's not going to be an easy recovery, even with all of our modern miracle medicines today. So I thought that was really interesting. And, um, also he talks about, I guess the place of suffering in the gospel and why the apostles felt like suffering was part of it. It's just like goes along with being an apostle and they knew that and they were comfortable with that. Um, not that suffering is ever comfortable, but they just knew that that was coming along with the territory. So I just have this quote here that I'll share. Suffering, it appears, is not simply something through which the faithful people must pass to get their destination. It is in itself the way in which the dark powers that have ruled the world will exhaust themselves, the way in which the one-off victory won by the Messiah on the cross will be implemented in the world. And then talking about Paul and Barnabas. Hang on, somebody's calling. Hi, hello. It's much later now. My mother-in-law came and helped me cook a yummy veggie hash and I've just been getting uh, I've been studying some stuff on VA, um, right, I'm not supposed to show you what that looks like, but it's a Discord server where I'm learning Korean. Um, I'm going to be signing up for a seven-week class in June, as well as an hour-a-day study challenge, so I had to read all the info on that. Anyways, regardless, um, Kevin just got home, hang on. Hello there, guys, okay, now it is... Uh, Wednesday, May 31st. So I kept getting interrupted yesterday because it was an absolutely crazy day. And I think you probably got that. You could probably tell that it was crazy. And today has already been crazy because the study one hour every day in June challenge that I thought was starting tomorrow actually started this morning because it's running on Korean standard time. So that was a busy morning that I didn't expect and I haven't gotten anything done, literally nothing, off of my to-do list. But I did figure out how the study sessions are going to happen, so they're pretty complex. But, like, I just, this was my first half of the week. My second half is rapidly filling up, and I'm gonna, ha I'm gonna have studying every morning at 10 a.m., and if I can't make it at 10, then I'll go at 9. And that's my plan throughout the month of June, so gonna be wild and then I also have this watch class starting on June 12th which is a totally separate thing and I also have two other courses but I'm planning on working on my homework for the one course during my morning hour so I'm hoping that since I'm doubling up on some of those challenges it'll work out well this is all for Bangtan Academy by the way it has nothing to do with reading like Jenny <sighs> or K-Tarpathon which I haven't touched in a couple days and I'm starting to feel like I really need to. And in fact, today I'm supposed to completely edit and upload and schedule the K-Tropathon announcement to go live at 12 a.m. tomorrow morning. 
but I'm also supposed to work. Like my morning is up. It's 12.30. I just made some lunch. So, and I totally burned the chicken. I was reheating some chicken. <laughs> I actually don't mind burned chicken because I like it crispy. I don't really like chicken that much. So I try to add flavor wherever I can. And crunchiness actually is great. And it was already grilled. So it was already like chewy and crispy. But, um, and then these are pumpkin pancakes, not pumpkin, they're squash pancakes, squash fritters, I guess, with like some oat flour in them and a little bit of serrano chili pepper and, or serrano pepper. And what else is in them? I, I think that's it. Like just like some salt and pepper. And then I have my dipping sauce here, which is mainly like soy sauce, roasted sesame seeds and rice vinegar. So that's my lunch. I've got my lunch going. I've got my schedule here so I can finally sit down and vlog with you a little bit. Um, so yeah, it's it's crazy. There's too much going on. I don't know how I'm supposed to prepare for k Tropathon with my study a day challenge plus my watch class, but we're going to try it. And okay, I'm not even, okay. Yeah. So, so let's talk about reading because I'm reading Moby Dick every evening and I'm almost feeling like I should just stick with this after I finish because I'm making good progress with this. I mean, after I finish this vlog, I'm thinking maybe I should just stick with Moby Dick because Victoria is actually my other book that I'm like, oh, I want to buddy read this early in the month. Um, Victoria is also in this and she wants to start Moby Dick. So maybe I'll ask her if she wants to focus on this first and then work on Cloud Cuckoo Land. Um, cause then next month we're supposed to start the Dickens novel. So I would really love to finish this by the end of the month. We'll see if I can do it. Um, yeah, I, I'm enjoying it. I, I feel like thankfully, I, if it's complex, then I'm completely missing it. But if it's just like something you're supposed to enjoy, then I'm getting it. I like it. It's really fun. And there, there was another biblical illusion and this one I understood. So Elijah shows up and he starts tell, okay, so I haven't even told you really what this book is about. We're following, the first line is call me Ishmael. And so that Ishmael is a man who has worked on ships before. And um, he's meeting with uh, a man from like, I don't even know what island he's from, but he's a man from a different island um, who isn't a Christian. He has his own, you know, uh, religion. And, but they've become buddy buddy really quickly and everybody else is afraid of this man because he's a cannibal. But Ishmael and this cannibal guy are like super friends. So um, their relationship is really cute. And I know Kellyanne really likes the cannibal guy as well. Um, his name, what is his name? Oh my gosh, I know it. it's so, it's so distinctive. I should have written it down. Um, Quee Quig, Quee Quig? I think his name is Quee Quig. So um, it's the only not biblical name pretty much that we've run across almost. So anyways, regardless. So um, Queequeg and Ishmael are kind of like wandering around Nantucket and they need to find um, a ship to board together. And the ship that they sign on to, um, they are quickly told by this random guy off the street named Elijah that they should not take this ship and that the captain um, who is Ahab is that's not somebody they want to be on board with and so that's really interesting because I actually don't know if Elijah in the Bible was the prophet during King Ahab's reign but I would not be surprised that would totally make sense but Elijah is a prophet in the Bible King Ahab is an evil king of Judah or Israel one of the two um, in early, early Jewish history. And um, he is actually somebody who, at, who humbles himself, but he was married to a wife that was not really following God at all. And so Ahab was mostly just a bad guy. <laughs> um, and so I'm, I'm guessing that the, this story is gonna go on those lines somehow. So enjoying that, loving Queequeg and the relationship. I really feel like Ishmael is a universalist because he talks a lot about religion in here. He talks a lot about um, Queequeg and his uh, religion and how he is not a Christ. He's not a Christian in the sense that uh, Ishmael is as a Presbyterian, but um, he's part of the 
brood of mankind. And so I guess, I guess he kind of feels like it doesn't really matter what Queequeg's religion is because they're all children of God. I don't know, it's so, he's, he's described it several times in here and it sounds very universalist. So interested to see where that's going, if that's gonna be like a major theme in this novel, but he talks like multiple times about how, oh, we should just, you know, it's impossible to, con to convince somebody from another culture that their religion is wrong. Um, so why bother? Just let them worship their idols. It doesn't really matter. But then the moment when Queequeg starts suffering physically for his own religion, he has a Ramadan, um, which makes me wonder if his religion is um, somewhat... Gosh, why am I blanking? Sorry, I probably need to eat. Um, but so it just makes me wonder if his religion is... Uh, the, the religion that... Islam! It makes me wonder if Islam is part of his religion? Um, but I don't know. So, I, yeah. The, anyways, regardless, the minute Queequeg starts doing Ramadan and fasting and stuff like this, Ishmael is like, why are you doing that? That's terrible for your body. Meanwhile, like, you're supposed to fast as a Christian. Like, that's something the Bible says to do <laughs> in prayer. It's something that's mirrored all over the Bible. So I'm just like, why are you so against fasting? Like, and people do it today just for health. Um, so it's just, it's interesting. I, I don't really understand Ishmael's religion very well, um, but I just feel like that doesn't really, it doesn't really matter. I just find it interesting. I think the story, but the story is so biblical. So it does matter because it keeps bringing in biblical illusions everywhere. So I, I guess I'm really curious how this is gonna end up, but I'm enjoying this quite a bit. And I'm not following on, along super closely, like I said. For some reason, I have a hard time focusing on this novel, but it doesn't seem to matter, like I said, as long as you're enjoying it still. Uh, that's really the point, I think. I think the point is just to enjoy it. So I am enjoying it, even though I'm not catching everything. The writing is really fun. It's just long-winded and it's long, and I just know that I'm never gonna get to it if I try to read every single word, which is usually how I try to read. I try to read every single word, because at least that's how I used to read. <laughs> um, I haven't really been reading that way as much since I stopped writing. I guess that it's been like a slow decline um, because when I was writing, I wanted to pay attention a lot to every single thing in a book and because I wanted people to read my own stories that way. But now that I'm not really writing as much, it doesn't matter as much to me. So anyways, that's I'm really enjoying that. I'm on chapter... 23 now and I started on chapter 15. So I'm making some progress. I've also been listening to Paul and reading Paul and I updated you a little bit about that yesterday. There was another quote though. He talks about suffering and um, what Paul, so uh, let's see if I can find it. So I, I, I'm always interested when books talk about suffering because that's something that I want to consider deeply because sometimes suffering doesn't seem to have a purpose to us, but I want to understand what the purpose is to God. And it's just interesting to, to, that he mentioned in here that suffering is like a way that the enemy can wear out his power because he's so focused on making Christians suffer and um, that can be redeemed by God in the end. Um, Anyway, they have suffered and have discovered that this too is a means of the power by which God's new age is coming to birth. So somehow suffering is bringing forth this new age of Christianity. Very interesting. I'm really enjoying it. I, I'm enjoying this so much. So yeah, I, I made some progress on Antioch and Jerusalem this morning, but not too much. All of the books that I'm reading for Jenny's reading vlog are pretty slow moving for me. Because again, they're things that I want to pay attention to every word if I can, which obviously I just can't. Um, but regardless, um, so the biography of Paul is just what it sounds like, but it is, in a lot of ways, kind of laying out what the time period around Paul was like. And what we can draw from like Josephus and Paul and other sources about the period and how... Um, I guess how that affects Paul, that how that affects his thought, how that affects his actions and his travels specifically as well, and how it affects 
um, people who were becoming Christians at the time, why they were becoming Christians at the time, why Christianity was being persecuted at the time. So loving it. It's so good. And then um, the other, the fantasy book that I am reading, uh, A Brightness Long Ago by Guy Gabriel K. This is supposed to be set in like an Italy-like uh, fantasy world. And what's happening right now is there's a lot of rivalries between, I guess it's city-states, or is it just... I think they're kind of like city cities, different city-states that are... It's like a city, but it's like um, if you're from the city, then you're under this guy, and it's at war with like another guy. Maybe not like open war, but there's a lot of rivalries happening between two specific kind of crime bosses is kind of what they feel like. Um, but this is like, it's not like crime bosses today, it's like crime bosses like in a fantasy world, so in an older sense. So I don't know what period this is supposed to be kind of drawing inspiration from in Italian history, but it doesn't even matter because the writing is so beautiful that I just, I would honestly love to just read that alone for this whole vlog. It's so good. So I'm really enjoying all three books basically that I'm reading. So thank you, Jenny. Um, sometimes we, our tastes are totally different and sometimes I'm just like, yes, this is amazing. Thank you. I think we both really like, um, we both like history. It's just that I'm not nearly as informed as she is as a historian and we both really like good writing, beautiful writing, um, but she can appreciate things that are mostly story driven as well as things with beautiful writing. And I tend to find that I appreciate things much more if they have beautiful writing and not as much if they don't, um, unless I'm just listening to them. If I'm just listening to them, then I don't really care about the writing. So, okay, anyways, yeah, enjoying it so much. Um, yesterday we had Bible study and studied Daniel chapter 6, which is the lion's den chapter. So great. So glad everybody was able to come who came. Love you guys. And, um, oh, and I did actually start listening to another book just because none of the books that I'm currently reading for the, for Jenny's reading challenge are kind of good on audiobook all the time. Like, Paul is good on audiobook, but I'm going back and rereading it. And also I can't listen to that at night because it kind of gets my brain going. So I started a historical fiction book called Daughters of Nantucket by Julie Gernstenblatt, which is a new release. And even though I've never heard Jenny mention this to my knowledge, I don't know, um, it is a historical fiction and it's new. So I feel like that is still kind of, I'm cheating a little bit because she's never mentioned this, but it feels like a Jenny release. So trying that out, 3% in, enjoying it on audio. So that's what's going on. And now I'm gonna eat my lunch and hopefully, I really need to work. I really don't have time to edit the K-Turbalon announcement video, but I need to get that out tomorrow. I don't know, maybe maybe I'll just tell my co-host I'm gonna be a few days late. Regardless, I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs> Bye. Hey guys, it's now Thursday, June 1st, hooray. And I'm just out on my walk and um, I'm listening to A Brightness Long Ago. I finally, I finally have discovered one of my books can be listened to, um, aside from Paul. But I just didn't want to keep listening to Paul because I want to actually physically read it for a while so I can kind of catch up. So I'm switching to A Brightness Long Ago while I walk. And I actually DNF'd The Daughters of Nantucket at 8%, not because it's bad, but there's just a lot of like really modern touches and maybe that's common for modern historical fiction, but they keep kind of throwing me out, <laughs> throwing me out of the uh, kind of world, I guess. So I don't think it's bad. In fact, I might even love it if I continued, I don't know. But for now, it's just not really working for me. So maybe I'll try it another time, which is unfortunate. I really wanted to be like, oh, I love this new release. It's great, but maybe I will at another time. But right now I have enough going on <laughs> that I just don't care that much. So back to a brightness long ago. Hello there guys. Okay, it's a little bit later on June 1st and I just have so much to talk about this week because I think because I'm enjoying everything. And it helps that I had already started these so I knew that I would enjoy them going in so there was no trepidation at all. I also knew that I wasn't probably going to finish very much this week since they're all pretty long. 
that's okay. But this is just a testament to how much you can talk about things that you love. <laughs> so I'm going to try to keep it short though. Um, so um, I wanted to mention that Moby Dick is making me rethink my DNFing strategy a little bit. It's, it's really making a point to me that there is an argument to be made for finishing classics, even if you're not enjoying them 100,000%, because um, oftentimes a second read is going to, you're going to understand it better, you're going to like it better. So once you've gone through the little bit of a torturous first read, <laughs> a lot of times you can go back and enjoy it a lot more on the second read, and I just have a feeling I'm going to enjoy this a lot more on the second read and I am enjoying it but it's maybe like a three 3.5 star enjoyment and I feel like on a later read I'll enjoy it more because it'll be less overwhelming but I mean people say about writing all the time that writing is rewriting I think reading is rereading in a lot of ways for me not for everybody probably but for me a lot of times I enjoy things more on reread or not. Sometimes I get everything that I wanted to get out of it the first time I read it, and then the second time I'm like, oh, that wasn't so great after all. <laughs> or I didn't end up applying any of these things to my life after all. Or it's just, it was good on one read. But then there's other books that become like super rich, and I think classics are among those kind of books that become super rich on reread. So one day I will reread this and be super glad, super, super glad that I read it. And I, I am glad that I'm reading it now. It's just... I know that it's it's going to be a long haul for me to finish this just because I have a lot of plans. <laughs> so, and then another thing, um, Jenny recommended a manga the other night. I think she must be reading it because she just texted me about it. Yona of the Dawn. Has anybody heard of this before? So this is really interesting because the author's name is a Japanese name, but all of the character names are Korean names. And it's a fantasy. So I don't know, is it a combination of like multiple Asian cultures? Is she just drawing from whatever culture she wants to for various things? I don't know. I'm so curious. Obviously the, the author's name has nothing to do with the actual book. So maybe maybe she's writing a Korean fantasy manga. I don't know, or drawing. Um, regardless, this is following a teenage girl who has this innocent crush. She wants to marry her cousin, which there's a ton of Goodreads reviews that are like, oh, I'm so uncomfortable with her choice of crush. And it's like, listen, she's a princess. She's nobility. Lots of nobility married their cousins. That's, that's not at all uncommon in history. So that didn't make me uncomfortable at all. But I guess if you're not really familiar with history, maybe that would make you uncomfortable. Not to say we should do that today, because we know a little more about these things today. But regardless, she has a big time crush on her cousin and um, finds out very quickly on that he is not who she thought that he was. So I am halfway through this. I read half of it last night and I was like not sleeping after that very well. <laughs> it's so fun, guys. I love it already. So yeah, I'm excited to continue this one. I, I was completely fooled, by the way by it fooled me completely and that's part of the fun about it i'm sure jenny wasn't fooled i just have a feeling that she was already like preferring a different person than i was from the beginning <laughs> she has a second sense about these things okay um okay what else so i also learned today that in greek nouns have stems isn't that bizarre nouns have stems most languages that I have studied, verbs have stems, and the verbs are what you conjugate and change. But basically in Greek, you frequently are changing the nouns, and they call it, what do they call it? Inter, in, inflection. Inflection is what they call it. Um, which I think is basically like the noun version of conjugating verbs but you're, con you're conjugating nouns instead. <laughs> um, so we have some conjugations in English, like pronouns was a really prime example that was used in this book to kind of demonstrate what inflection is. You know, a pronoun can change depending on the number of people, the gender of the person, several things can change, can change a pronoun. Um, but there's not actually a lot of nouns that change forms. Most of the time, a teacher is teacher, regardless of whether it's a he or a she, 
or, you know, yeah. Um, for plural, you use S, teacher, so that's inflected slightly. But yeah, anyways, um, very interesting. I'm just loving learning about languages, guys. This is so fun. Um, okay, and then for the Paul biography, um, so it's, it's talking in this chapter, chapter six, about all the reasons why Christians were persecuted at this time and the kind of challenge that Paul is dealing with, which is the Romans felt like what the Jesus followers were saying was um, like creating instability in the empire, basically, by saying there's only this one God that you should worship. All the rest, no. Because the whole Roman system was built, all of their buildings, everything was built around the gods. So if you're like, no, all those gods aren't important, that would change everything about the economy and everything. Like everything would be changed. So the Romans are persecuting the Christians. The Jews are persecuting the Christians because it seems like the Christians are saying, out with the Torah, out with the old, you know, and specifically they were honing in on the issue of um, circum... Cir Sorry, words today. I've been working a lot, which was good. I needed to get some real work done because I haven't been doing well with that. But circumcision, circumcision. So because the Christians were against circumcision, the Jews were very afraid that the Christians were just throwing out the whole Torah, which to the Jews, it really sounded kind of reminiscent of compromise with the world, which is something they have learned in their history not to do. God definitely... Uh, drummed it into the heads of the Israelites, do not compromise with the pagan world because you will be punished. <laughs> um, so yeah, the, the Israelites are very uncomfortable with this Christian way of thinking, but it's really about a new world and a new way of thinking Christianity is. So I'm just loving this book so much. And I didn't realize I, I posted it on Instagram and a couple people commented about it and Emma from the Bookish Princess said she'd read this. I remember her saying this sounds interesting. I didn't realize that she had read it. So that's cool. That's cool. I didn't know anybody else who'd read it. So I guess I'm reading like Emma too. Yay. <laughs> that's not surprising. Um, so okay. Um, what else? Oh something else it mentioned that the communal sharing um, in Jerusalem might have caused some of the poverty in Jerusalem, which was something I'd never heard anybody talk about. Like, I always thought, oh, that's like, that's like the ideal socialism in that. And that's in Jerusalem. They were like sharing everything amongst themselves. But it was kind of, his theory is that they were doing that because they thought it was the end times. And so they were making sure everybody was provided for um, but it didn't like work as a long-term organization for society. So I thought that was fascinating. I've never heard anybody address it like that. Um, and I really also appreciate how this biography is giving me a new, like slightly more academic lens through which to view scripture because it is an ancient document and, um, you can't just view it like today. It is timeless in a lot of ways and it changes with time and it changes as you grow. But in some ways, it also doesn't change. And you need to be aware of what was happening. You need to be very aware of the context of these situations. And he talks specifically about Galatians because ton tonally, <laughs> Paul is like kind of angry <laughs> sounding. He's like sarcastic and stuff like that. And so it's just, it really challenges you as a person as you grow with it. You can't just accept it as yeah like a calm statement of beliefs <laughs> like there's a person writing these there's personality in these and also it's only half of the conversation because this was a letter that paul was writing to a church and the reply is not something that we have and so it's like you're listening to one half of a telephone conversation and there's so much that he leaves out because they had a shared context already that we don't understand and so it's just fascinating. I'm loving this biography so much. Um, I definitely don't feel like it's uh, reducing my view of scripture at all. It's really enhancing it and making me more interested in it. So yes. And I also researched Daughters of Nantucket a little bit more. And I don't think it's going to be like the book for me, unfortunately. It's just the plot doesn't really sound like anything I'm interested in. So that's my update for today. I should probably stop updating you or this vlog is going to be 10 hours long. But I'll probably finish Yona, the manga, tomorrow, and I'll probably read some more of this and maybe more of Paul tomorrow. I don't know. 
but and maybe that'll be my last update we'll see because i have a lot of editing to do this weekend already okay i'll talk to you soon bye hello there guys it is now the end of this reading like jennifer brooks vlog and i enjoyed it so much so just wanted to do a little bit of an ending wrap up for you guys i got to 54 percent of the way through your brightness long ago and um 20 i hit the 25 percent mark of moby dick so i'm at 28 percent there's a brightness long ago and uh loving bowl i i'm especially loving a brightness long ago there was like a very uh i guess explicit sex scene so if that worries you um there was only one so far in the whole 50 percent that i can recall so um but it's so worth it guys it's so good i i'm just loving this more than any fantasy that i've read for a long time it's just so beautiful so gonna keep listening to that i also finished yona of the dawn volume one this was easy obviously obviously easy reading i love it so much i can't wait to continue so thank you for the recommendation jenny it was spot on and yeah that's mainly it i did also this was not part of the jenny vlog but i finished monster volume two and <laughs> this was so good too um yeah it's been a great reading week i'm planning to continue reading moby dick maybe until i hit like halfway and then maybe i'll switch to Cloud Cuckoo Land next week. That's kind of the plan. But I also want to finish Nothing to Envy. And I also picked up from the library um, the first of the Bartimaeus trilogy. I think it was Dia that recommended this as like a good read for teens, like actual teens, not like older than teens, young adult readers. Um, so I'm excited to try that. I do have the audiobook. So we'll see. But I have like three audiobooks right now that I'm listening to. So that's enough for one person. And then the other thing that I just picked up is Crying in H Mart, finally. I'm supposed to be starting that this month, but I need the audiobook first. It's supposed to be a buddy read. But I haven't heard from my buddy reader in like a week. So I don't feel too bad about not starting it right away because we'll just start whenever we're both feeling ready. <laughs> so anyways, that's kind of... Yeah, play. oh, and I did start Pilgrim's Progress as well. Also not part of the Jenny vlog, but something I need to get to. So I'm planning to read about 5% per day. So I have two more percent that I need to get to today in addition to studying, in addition to other things. Oh, I was gonna turn on my mic, but I totally forgot. Too late. Anyways, that is it guys. Hope that you enjoyed this vlog. Let me know down below what Jenny has influenced you to read and yeah, I'll talk to you guys soon. I already have an idea of who I want to read like next. But I think I'm gonna wait. I might wait a week to start that. I don't know, I might be too excited. I'll let you guys know next week if I'm gonna do it or not. <laughs> okay, bye. I forgot to mention one more thing, guys. Um, so, um, there were so many people who wanted to join Krista and I for Pilgrim's Progress that we decided we're gonna do a live show instead of a Zoom because having a Zoom with that many people would just be a little bit wild. So we're gonna have a live show. I think we're gonna have it on my channel and we'll have sprints on her channel. So it's gonna be like a regular read-along. <laughs> Super excited to talk with, it, talk with you guys about it. 